Well, first of all, before the dollar was the reserve currency, all those other currencies that you mentioned were backed by gold. I mean, they weren't just fiat. I mean, the dollar is the first currency in history to achieve that status as pure fiat currency, right? So there's no real money behind it. And, and so what I think is going to happen in a world where no central banks currently issue legitimate currency, right? Legitimate currency would be currency backed by gold, real money. That is the situation that the world was in before the dollar. And in fact, when the dollar originally became the world's reserve currency, it was backed by gold. In fact, it was redeemable right. in gold on demand. I don't think the dollar ever would have gotten that status in the first place but for the tie to gold and dollars were basically or Federal Reserve notes were really IOUs for dollars and the dollars were gold. That's what a, the dollar was. It was a weight of gold. And so in today where nobody is actually issuing any legitimate currency, where every central bank has just got fiat, I think that when the dollar is no longer the main reserve for all those fiat currencies, uh, they're not just going to pick another fiat currency to replace the dollar. It wouldn't make any sense uh, to just go to the euro or to go to the yen, because at the end of the day, they're just paper too. I think the dollar's demise is gonna introduce the remonetization of gold, not that it was ever demonetized by central banks, because central banks all hold gold to some degree. But I think gold is going to replace the dollar as the primary reserve asset for all central banks. Well, I definitely don't think it's the U.S. dollar because the U.S. dollar enjoys the benefit of the even dollar with being all those gold currency. reserves backing it, even as yes, being top of first, the list of gold reserves. Yes, because first of all, maybe they don't even have as much gold as is claimed. I don't know when the last time there was an independent audit of Fort Knox, so the government can claim they have a certain amount of gold. You know whether or not you want to believe them, but let's assume that they're being honest. How long will they be able to hold on to that gold? Because we're going to now have to start paying for our imports with gold, right? We have a huge trade deficit and our trading partners, if we don't have real goods, we're going to have to ship some gold out to pay for uh, our, our, our imports. So it's not like the gold supply is going to last very long in the world that we have now. And also the U.S. government, you know, if they're going to run deficits, where are they going to, you know, they're going to have to start spending gold. I mean, right now, all they have to do is print money. So if the government wants something, they just need to print money and they can get it. But in the new world where the where gold is a reserve, if they want something, they need the gold to pay for it, right? They either have to tax the citizens and get, you know, their gold, which is, you know, backing their, their currency, or they're going to have to, you know, start dipping into their, their reserves. So the, the, the U.S. gold reserve can be depleted very quickly uh, right. if we need that gold to pay for things. See, right now, we don't need anything to pay for anything. America is the biggest beneficiary of the, the, the dollar standard, because let's say you take a small country. Let's say you take New Zealand, right? If New Zealand um, wants to import, it has to export. It can't just print. The New Zealand dollar isn't the reserve currency, so it has to earn dollars in order to buy things that are dollar denominated, we don't have to earn anything. We just print them. Uh, but if we right. have to start earning, just like everybody else, you know, the other countries, it's not going to make a difference to New Zealand whether they have to earn dollars or earn gold. They still have to earn that reserve. It only makes a difference to the United States because now we go from printing something to earning something, and it's a lot harder to earn than to print. Well, absolutely. I think those markets have the most to gain by the collapse of the dollar. And I think that they have sh sh you know, sh uh, shared a disproportionate burden in supporting the dollar. Because, you know, if Americans are living beyond their means, which they clearly are by virtue of the reserve currency and these massive deficits. So if American citizens are living beyond their means, that means citizens in other countries, by definition, must be living beneath their means to make this possible. And I think it's the emerging market uh, consumers that are bearing the brunt of that, of that subsidy. And so when the dollar collapses and Americans are no longer living above their means, which means Americans aren't consuming nearly as much stuff, 
then who's going to get to consume the stuff that Americans are, are now too poor to buy? I think a lot of those new consumers are going to be found in the emerging market. So, right. uh, okay. so it's like a giant weight is lifted from their shoulders and now they're in much better shape. Well, look, when governments are desperate, they do desperate things. And at this point, I don't think there's any reason for them to panic. But in the future, if Dalio and I are correct, let's say about what's going to happen to the dollar, as more and more Americans become cognizant of the risk of inflation, uh, they will take action to protect themselves, right? And, and ways that they do that are by buying gold um, or by buying foreign assets, getting into foreign currencies. Some people may do that by buying Bitcoin. I think that's a mistake, but some people may do that. Um, and so if you look at inflation as a tax, which is really what it is, right? Because the government, they can either take your money officially as a tax, right? Or they can just print money, but then they're taxing you by inflation because what they're doing is they're reducing the value of your paper assets and they're transferring that value to whoever is the recipient of those spending. Now, if you want to avoid the inflation tax, that's what you do. You don't hold US dollars. You get rid of them as fast as you can to try to avoid the tax because the tax is on dollars or dollar denominated assets. So. If somebody has a bunch of savings in bonds and they sell the bonds and they put that money in gold bullion, they're exempt from the inflation tax on that money, right? And so if the government says, hey, wait a minute, we have to close these tax breaks, we have to try to prevent Americans from avoiding the inflation tax by getting out of dollars, the way they would do that is either they outright ban the purchase of these inflation hedges or they tax the purchase in such a way as to make the transactions prohibitively expensive. So they put in foreign exchange controls, right? Where they can, or gold, they, they, they find ways. And you can look at other countries when capital yeah. starts to flee because there's a lot of inflation or high taxes, governments try to plug up the holes, the escape valves, so they can keep their victims stuck and they can keep on you know, victimizing them with taxation or inflation or whatever it is. So it certainly is possible that in the near future, if things really start to get bad and more people perceive the threat that the government will try to do something to prevent them from getting that shelter. But right now, not that many people understand this threat. I mean, they're just oblivious. They're very complacent. They they believe the Fed just like they believed them in the past and they, they, they still haven't figured it out. So right now, only a small number of people are buying gold and, and buying real assets and getting out of dollars. So right now there's no taxes, which is another reason to do it now, because they can impose the taxes retroactively. So, you know, that would be illegal. So if you already have your money out of the dollar and then they impose those taxes on getting out of the dollar, well, you're already out. 